So DJI just launched the new Mavic Air 2, but there's a few things wrong with it. Let's talk. Hi, I'm Ash from Droning On, and DJI has just launched its latest drone, the DJI Mavic Air 2. And a rather beautiful drone it is too, which brings some incredible new features to the market, especially for what's called a mid-range drone. But it has a few issues in my opinion, and in this video, we're gonna talk about them. So here we go. So the latest drone from DJI has no upwards or sideways obstacle avoidance sensing. For many drone operators, that's going to be a big problem. Even as experienced drone operators sometimes retain those settings on just as a precautionary measure, especially if we're trying to navigate somewhere a little bit crowded in terms of trees, buildings, etc. To not have upward sensing means that the APAS system can't make the drone automatically drop down if it detects something above it. It also means that if you're ascending and you're in a wooded area or a forest and there's a big tree branch above you, the drone's not going to stop. In addition, not having sideways sensing means that if you are running some sort of sideways shot, then the drone's not going to detect any objects on either side. However, it's worth noting that sideways detection is actually only enabled on the other Mavic drones if you're in tripod mode or active track, not manual flight. Next, it's weight, which at 570 grams is over twice the regulatory weight for most countries where drones require registration. Now, registration is cheap. I think in most countries it's under $10, but still, it's an overhead and it's something that will put some people off. The Mavic Mini was launched and it's incredible because it weighs only 249 grams, but then compare the capabilities of the Mavic Mini with the Mavic Air 2 and it's night and day. The Mavic Air 2 is an incredibly capable drone, but for some, that weight will put them off. But the reality is you can't produce at this time a drone that's this capable under 250 grams. DJI did the best that they possibly could with the Mavic Air 2 and its weight, but some people still won't be happy. At 570 grams, it's above the original weight of the Mavic Air, which was 430 grams. That will also upset some. The next one is about sensors. The Mavic Air 2 only has one IMU and one compass, which is quite a surprise seen as the Mavic Pro and the Mavic 2 range and even the original Mavic Air had redundant IMU and compass. These are central processing units that are responsible for the drone knowing its whereabouts, knowing its position, its location, its tilt, its yaw, etc. If any of these sensors fail, that's when you end up with a flyaway. Ultimately, it comes down to cost, doesn't it? And incorporating redundant sensors means more money. However, technology does move along very quickly, and compared to the sensing of the earlier Mavic Pro and the original Mavic Air, technology has evolved, and so these single units are far more capable. Still, I like the peace of mind of redundancy, and this drone unfortunately doesn't have it. One of the lovely features of the original Mavic Air and also the Mavic 2 is that it has internal storage. It was only eight gigabytes on the original model and you would expect a brand new model many years later to have at least twice that, but it doesn't. The Mavic Air 2 only has eight gigabytes, just like the original. It could have easily incorporated 64 gig onto this model as a supplementary element of storage to inserting an SD card but no, they stuck with eight gig. When you're shooting 4K footage, especially with a bit rate of 120 megabits per second, that eight gigabytes is gonna disappear in a couple of minutes. So what a shame that they didn't even ship 32 gig of internal storage as a minimum. The next one, no DJI GO 4 compatibility. Instead, this drone will only work with the new DJI Fly app. Now, you could argue that that's not a negative because a lot of people hate the DJI 4 GO app because it's bloated and slow and heavyweight. And this new app from DJI, DJI Fly, is lightweight and refined and new. However, many will be disappointed to lose their familiar interface of the original app. No ADS-B or AirSense for Europe. Now, interestingly, DJI are producing two versions of the Mavic Air 2, one which has the onboard ADS-B chipset so that it can detect manned aircraft in the area and warn the operator via the app. A brilliant feature, and I want it, but I live in Europe, and so when I buy one of these Mavic Air 2 units, 
I'm gonna get it without AirSense. I think it's a real shame that DJI didn't just build one model, reduce production costs, and ship every model with ADS-B because it doesn't transmit your location, it receives the location of other manned aircraft. That can only be a positive benefit, especially as ADS-B is not just an American Canadian standard, it's global. DJI definitely missed a trick here. And given the option, I would have the US version personally. The look and feel of the Mavic Air 2 is not as sexy as the original Mavic Air. Let's face it, that Mavic Air, when it first arrived, everybody loved. And even now, I look at that drone and I think, what a beautiful, modern, slick, compact looking drone. The new one just looks like a Mavic 2. When the original Mavic Air came out, we all thought that it marked the beginning of a new look and feel for DJI drones because it arrived after the original Mavic Pro. But unfortunately, that look and feel, I don't know whether the creative guy got sacked that designed that one, but we've not seen anything like it since. It's not all about looks, it's about ergonomics and flight efficiency. But let's face it, when we look at a drone, we want it to look sexy. And that Mavic Air original model certainly did. The new one has an angrier looking front to it, which I really do like, but it's not quite the original Mavic Air, is it? Now, that's a summary of everything that I believe is wrong with the Mavic Air 2. However, in contrast, there's a lot right about it. 48 megapixel photos, a half inch sensor, 34 minutes of flight time, the longest flight time of any DJI consumer grade drone, 240 frames per second at 1080p, and 60 frames per second at 4K. And a price of only $799 for a drone that's mid-range, but incredible in specification. So while I moan about what I don't like about it, I can't help but praise what is absolutely right about it. Comment below with your thoughts on what you've heard in this video. Give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down if your brain works at one frame a second. <laughs> and of course, click subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.